Hey there guys, um, my name is Frank and I'm a physics learning assistant for Professor Duffy's um, 9 to 11 a.m. studio section. And what I want to do today is to really quickly go over the um, real life eddy current application that you guys saw in lecture yesterday, or not too long ago. But um, yeah, this one is the train brakes, train brakes example that involves some of Lenz's law and a induced eddy current that causes your train to slow down and eventually stop. So let's look over here. Uh, you're, you have a random train. It's going. Oh, ooh, train. <laughs> you have a train that's going to the right, um, and then let's focus on on just the wheel because that's where all the cool physics stuff is actually happening. So when we zoom in, um, sometimes on trains, what we can do is use an electromagnet to generate a magnetic field that either goes into the board, like in this example over here, or out of the board. And as the wheel turns, it essentially is going to slow down. Now, um, what I forgot to draw is that the wheels are initially spinning in this direction. So the train is going over there, right? Um, OK. So the green circle you see over here is just a portion of the wheel um, before it enters the magnetic field region and after. All right? So um, what we need to do is do a before, after, and opposing analysis for the currents that are uh, generated, or the field lines. So what we're going to do is analyze the green circle portion of the wheel as it enters the mag magnetic field region. All right, so before there's no magnetic field lines going in, right, as you can see. And afterwards, we're going to get about two magnetic field lines going in. So what do you think our opposed picture is going to look like? OK, it's intermission time, meaning I'm tired and I need a rest. And it's time for you guys to figure out which direction will the opposing induced current be pointing. Will it be clockwise or counterclockwise? And then the opposing induced current will generate a magnetic field. So you guys also need to figure out, will that magnetic field be pointing in to the board or out of the board at your face? OK? All right, so hopefully you guys took a guess already. But here you go. Um, as you can see, afterwards, we get more field lines going in. So our, our, induced, um, our, our induced current must generate some sort of a magnetic field that comes out of the board to cancel out with the change that occurred. So it has to be like that, out of the, out of the board. So what direction has, does the current have to go then? Well, it's counterclockwise because of the right hand roll. If you want a field line coming out, it has to, the current has to cur curl around this way. All right. So then what you do over here is that now that you know that the current that's induced is going um, counterclockwise, you do your right hand rule analysis for this part of the wheel as it enters the magnetic field region. And you find the force that's generated by this um, induced current. So you know that the current is going um, counterclockwise. So at this point here, you, you don't really care because it hasn't entered the field yet. But at this point here, you analyze just this green portion of the, of the wheel that's entered the region. So your current is going this way. The field lines are going into the board. It's like, so your palm is pointing down. And then your thumb is the force. So as you can see, at different points of the wheel, there's different forces that are generated. But they're all pointing in this direction, essentially. So I'm just going to draw another picture here to help you out. Um, you get a force over here, over here, over here, over here, and over here. And these forces, they're all opposing the rotation of the wheel in that direction. So that's what causes our train to eventually slow down and stop. OK, so just to reiterate one more time, um, the induced current generates forces that point towards the center of your circle. And overall, you have a net force that's going this way and opposing the rotation of the wheels. And then it's what causes the train to slow down eventually. OK. So now, what if we reverse the magnetic field? And instead of the magnetic field lines going into the board, they come out of the board. Um, some of you guys might remember the answer because you just had lecture, but try not to think about that. Um, take a guess. Um, do what we just did over here. Do the same analysis that we did for this situation, and come back in a couple seconds and try it out. Okay? Hit pause if you need if you need to. Okay. Ready for the answer? It's why? All right. Let's do it. Let's do it right now and figure it out. Okay? 
So before, um, there is no field lines going in or out, right, as you can see. And then afterwards, we have two field lines coming out of the board at, at you. So what kind of a impose, sorry, what kind of a oppose, ah. so what kind of opposing induced current must be generated then to fight this change in um, flux, essentially? If you guys said a field line that goes into the board, then you're correct. And the current that has to, the, the induced current that has to generate this field line must be clockwise, right? Because of your right hand rule. All right, so that's over here, clockwise. So now, um, what's going to be the direction of the force that's generated by, these, by this induced current? Um, is it going to be slowing down or speeding it up? Let's find out. Okay, once again, we don't care about this picture because this portion of our wheel has not entered the magnetic field yet. If you're not in the magnetic field, you won't get a force that's generated, or you won't generate an induced current either. So over here, you do your right-hand rule. You know the current is clockwise, so we follow the, the circle till this point, this point right here when it enters the wheel. Um, the field is going out, and my hand can't do it, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, let's see. How about this? Yeah. The current is going clockwise for this portion inside the field. The field is coming out at your face. And as you can see, my thumb is, once again, pointing all in this direction, just like before. We get the same exact picture as before, almost. The forces generated all point towards the center of the circle. And the important point is that, overall, there's another, once again, we get a net force in this direction, opposing the rotation of the wheel and slowing down the train, once again. OK, so all right. OK, so that's basically it. And um, if you guys want extra practice, make sure you try the situation um, where you have a portion of your, of your wheel inside the, the magnetic field initially, but then it exits the magnetic field. And in both cases, are you still going to get a force in, um, in a direction opposing the rotation of the wheel, or is it now going to be helping the rotation of the wheel and speeding up your train? OK, so try that out. Um, if you are unsure if you got the right answer, ask it on Piazza, and we'll get back to you. OK, see you guys in class. Nothing, nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> whoops. Whoops. Big whoops. There you go.